Come with me to the heart of the Mississippi Delta, where I'm learning about the catfish, one of the best delicacies Mississippi has to offer. Follow me in my journey from learning about the catfish industry to visiting a farm and a processing plant to finally eating some delicious southern food. Hi, I'm Elie Joel and I'm French. I decided to come to the great state of Mississippi for my graduate studies. And one of the things locals kept asking me is, why would you come here? to Mississippi. Well, in my opinion, Mississippi has a lot to offer. So let me show you why you should come to Mississippi. As a French citizen, I take food really seriously. And one thing in particular that Mississippi does best is catfish. My first destination is Belzona in the center of the Mississippi Delta. This little town of less than 3,000 inhabitants is known as the catfish capital of the world and hosts every year the World Catfish Festival. Welcome to the World Catfish Festival in Belzona, Mississippi. The festival started as a bicentennial uh, celebration in 1976. And of course, we were declared uh, catfish capital of the world by Governor Cliff Finch. And we've uh, continued the festival and we've only uh, missed it, I think, um, three years in, uh, since 1976. There are so many different types of vendors here. Uh, any kind of food you want to eat, you're probably going to find there. Of course, all kinds of catfish dishes you're going to find them. We have a lot of auction crowd. People come all the way from around the world just to be in Bells on Mississippi. We refer to it as being the heart of the Delta. I'm from Greenville, Mississippi, which is about uh, 45 minutes from here. Um, this is the first one I've been to in probably about four years. And it's a fun festival, it's a lot of things to do, a lot of things for kids to do, a lot of food vendors, uh, clothing vendors. It's a beautiful day, so everybody needs to come out. You know I had to try some catfish. I was wondering why catfish is so important to this little town. This is where the catfish processing, catfish industry started. It started in, in, in Belzone. Uh, a lot of uh, catfish farmers, they start, it all started right here. And then it spread it all around the world. Uh, at one time, we had more catfish ponds in Humphreys County than any other county in Mississippi. You can find all these catfish statues all over town, like a lot of them. I needed to know what that was about. My wife and I were in Seattle, and we and then in um, and we saw the hogs in Seattle, and then we saw the uh, cows in Chicago that had been decorated, and we thought it'd be a good thing to do. And we came back and talked to the mayor, and they agreed, and so um, we ordered the catfish uh, statues, I guess what you'd say, uh, from the. Um, cow painters in Chicago and then we had local artists to paint them and they've been out a long time. They need refreshing right now but um, they've been a great thing for us. I wanted to learn more about the importance of the catfish industry in the state of Mississippi as a whole and why it grew so big here in particular. I hopped on my car and headed to Stoneville, not too far from Belzona. This is a tiny town that pretty much only hosts the Delta Research and Extension Center. This is a place where scientists and PhDs study the aquaculture and agriculture of the Delta. I met with Dr. Jamie Avery, an extension professor at the National Warm Water Aquaculture Center. Well, catfish is the most important aquaculture species in the U.S. It makes up about 74% of all the food fish we, we raise in the U.S. and Mississippi accounts for about 56 percent of that. Um, if you look at an economic impact in Mississippi, uh, it's about a 1.3 billion dollar impact to Mississippi. 
uh, they generate probably 6,400 jobs and about $46 million in taxes every year. I got to see some of the research ponds that they have here in Stoneville. And we actually started building ponds back in 1957, but we, it really didn't take off till about 1970. You know, you look at, at what makes, let's say, the Mississippi Delta so ripe for catfish farming. You know, we've got very heavy clay soil, so, you know, um, our water doesn't seep away. We've got a fairly shallow source of water underneath us, so we don't have to drill very far. So even those natural resources were in place. The investments that Mississippi made very early on uh, as far as processing plants, feed mills, uh, equipment manufacturing. So that, that kind of grew up around the initial catfish ponds. And so once you had that in place, then you could really see the kind of fast expansion uh, throughout Mississippi. Um, Alabama, Arkansas, Louisiana kind of followed, but uh, Mississippi has been the leader in that production essentially since 1970. I asked Dr. Avery what he thought was the future of the industry. He was his answer. Mississippi is the center of the universe as far as farm U.S. farm-raised catfish goes. Uh, I think that will continue. You know, I, I don't see other states rebounding to the point where they have near the acreage or the near the infrastructure uh, that we do. I wanted to know how catfish was raised and produced. I hopped on my car and I drove all the way to Yazoo City. Welcome to Yazoo City, where is located Simmons Catfish. I'm about to go visit their processing plant. Come with me. Simmons Catfish is a family-owned business, and we've been in business uh, about 40 years. So we uh, hatch the fish, grow the fish, process the fish, and transport the fish. My father-in-law started this business 40 years ago, and now I work here with uh, his daughter, myself. So family operation. We hopped on the truck and crossed the acreage. I got to see some of the feeding storage as well as other infrastructures, many ponds and the oxygen generators, and I even got to witness some of the feeding. We finally arrived to a pond and the process team was about to harvest. They had previously gathered all the fish inside this huge fishing net. And it takes almost 16 months for a fingerling to grow into a food-sized fish. Our operation, we like fish between a pound to two pounds. Um, that's what our customers want. So to do that, it takes 16 months to raise that fish. They dipped in this smaller fishing net in order to pick up the fish and lock them in the truck. What we do here is after we get a pond that we think we want to harvest, um, we check the flavor on it. We to pull three samples out of each pond to make sure they're on flavor before we sain it. And when we sang the pond, we try to run that pond either that day or the very next day to make sure that the fish are comfortable, make sure the fish aren't stressed. They even helped me climb on top of the truck in order to get a better view. The catfish were then transported to the plant inside these water tanks in order to keep them fresh during the transport. And they caught one of the fish in order to show me its size. The fish was not happy to be here. Then Andy, his wife Katie and I headed to the processing plant. That's why the fish are separated from the bones and cut into fillet. Look at this expertise. I even got a free lesson on fish anatomy. We either ice pack the fish and it'll be at our customer within 24 to 48 hours or we will freeze the fish with a shelf life of almost 10 months. Let me walk you for the way the fish is frozen. They basically enter this huge freezer for that belt and come out completely frozen within only 30 minutes. They can then be packaged, ready to be transported. This is a family business. It's been that way for 40 years. Um, it's something I think um, buying locally is important. I think it helps farmers. I know it helps us. So we encourage people to know who your local farmers are and know that they need all the support they can get um, 
every day from consumers. At the end of my visit, Katie and Andy gave me several brochures with catfish recipes I could try to make at home. That made me really hungry, and I really wanted to know what Mississippi restaurants had to offer. The public needs to know which is the best way to cook catfish. Is it fried? Is it grilled? Now that we know how catfish is produced, it's time for my favorite part. The part where I get to go to restaurants and eat delicious food. And I'm starting here at Lost Hill Fish House. Lost Hill Fish House is located in Holly Springs, Mississippi, and offers a very traditional atmosphere. Look at that decoration, so rustic. Despite being a fish house, catfish is actually the only type of fish they offer. I ordered fried fillets with a side of fries and coleslaw. They were crispy on the outside and fondant on the inside. They also came with a side of hush puppies and baked beans. And oh my god, look at this hush puppy. So delicious. I also got the chance to talk with Jim Sabatier, who told me about his catfish memories. I've been eating catfish all my life. When I was a little boy, we used to run a trot line across the Lacassine Bayou in southern Louisiana. And we would bait that thing with P&G soap, Procter & Gamble soap, and catfish will eat that. <laughs> in high school, we were doing our own fried catfish, okay? And in the South, everything has to be deep fried, right? Breaded and deep fried, okay? And I love to fry catfish myself. I have two big burners outside that I use for frying my catfish. Here they come. Probably the best catfish in North Mississippi right here. Yeah, it is. <laughs> absolutely love that place. I headed back to my car and drove them to Sherman, Mississippi, where you can find Craving Catfish, a huge warehouse turned into a restaurant. As soon as I entered, my eyes glazed at that gigantic buffet of southern food. A lot of families come here to have lunch or dinner together in this convivial atmosphere. I did not know what to pick. I was really intrigued by the whole fried catfish, so I decided to have some of it, as well as some of the grilled catfish that was just calling my name. The buffet offers a huge variety of sides, such as mac and cheese and fried okra. I do have to admit, I was not a huge fan of the whole catfish, just because of the bones. The grilled catfish, on the other hand, was terrific. Apparently, I wasn't the only one who liked their catfish. I like the fish. I got to talk with Gerald Hagen, the owner of Craving Catfish. He shared with me the secret to his famous catfish. Do everything by recipe and do everything by timers. And you say, well, what does that mean? Consistency. If you use that same recipe every time, if you turn that catfish, that whole catfish is turned three times in the batter, not four, not two. We, we turn it so many times. You say, well, that's kind of silly. No, it's consistency. This is the end of my trip. I hope you liked this episode and I hope I inspired you to come visit Mississippi. Thank you for watching. Oh,